Today's interview is sponsored by Megalopolis City of Collectibles, the exclusive domestic fulfillment partner for the Four Horsemen's Mythic Legions line. Be sure to follow the link in the video description to shop all of your favorite toy lines. so much for joining me for yet another one of our stay at home interviews, talking to folks from within the toy industry, kind of getting the skinny on some of our favorite toy lines. Today, for the first time on the series, I am welcoming my good friend Cornboy from Four Horsemen Design. How's it going, CB? Pixel Dan, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. It is good to see you. Good to see uh, you too. It's been a while. It has been a while. It has been a while. And it Power feels Con. like, yeah, PowerCon, but that feels like a lifetime ago, right? With everything that's been going on. It feels, sure like it's been, feels like it's been so long since we've been at conventions or since those were a thing. So, so I guess like that's going to be a while before they happen again too, huh? Man, it's awful. I know. I know. Well, that's why I'm so thankful that uh, we can do stuff like this, that we've got technology and we've got the ability to kind of connect online like this. So thank you so much, man, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here, man. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I guess that's a good place to start. Um, it's kind of been my opening question for everybody I've been talking to with everything that's going on with the way the world is right now. How is Four Horsemen Studio kind of handling things? How are you guys hanging in there? Well, I mean, initially when we found out that it was going on over in China, um, we were kind of like, oh, this is something that's going to be, you know, it's going to pass. It's not going to be a big deal. It turned out to be a huge deal over there. And our factories completely shut down. We have two factories doing work on uh, Mythic Legion stuff for us right now. Both of those shut down for like three months straight. Now, our factory, it's, they've gotten back to almost full speed now. And they're like chugging forward. And they're trying to get things back on track as quickly as possible. I think there is going to be a little bit of a delay in production. But other than that, it, it, I mean, it's not that bad. It's not as bad as we thought it was going to be. But at the studio now, we uh, are no longer working full time in the studio physically. We're all working from home and then only going into the studio if it's an absolute necessity and trying to make it so there might be only one or two of us at a, at a time in the studio, trying to time things out that way. Because we still, I mean, we can do a lot of the stuff digitally now, like all the sculpting and fabrication and all that kind of stuff is all gone digital now and <clears throat> communicate through email and texting and everything. But then when it comes to printing actual figures, you know, doing the digital printing and doing the paint masters, that's all physical stuff that has to be done. So we've been kind of bouncing around, going back and forth and making sure that we're kind of trying to avoid each other. We were all wearing masks. My wife's actually making masks and sending them out to uh, essential workers and stuff for free. Just just uh, trying to help things out. And she made us all masks that's amazing. at the studio and everything, too. So we're being as safe as possible. We're, you know, obviously not back up to full speed at the studio. Jim is going in more often now. They've kind of loosened things up a little bit here in New Jersey. Things are still pretty ugly here. But um, yeah, yeah. I talked to I talked to Randy not too long ago from NECA, and he was yeah. basically saying that New Jersey was was pretty pretty bad. Yeah, New Jersey and New York got hammered, man. It's it's been really bad here. But I, I think we're kind of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel as long as people keep following like the social distancing guidelines and everything. Everything will be fine. You know, worst case scenario, you don't do a lot of hugging, as much hugging as you used to, and you wear a mask. Not that big a deal. Doesn't bother That's right. Me. And you stay away from people. I'm not much of a people person anyway, so staying away from people, I'm, I'm good with that. <laughs> All right. I, I get it. I won't hug you anymore, CB. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want the big sweaty CB hugs anymore? <laughs> Um, so with, with everything, uh, you said that China's kind of getting back up to speed and everything, but can you kind of speak to, um, some of the release schedules for Mythic Legions? Has any of that been affected or where are we at with all of that stuff? It's definitely been affected. I mean, we had planned to have, um, I believe it was Mythic Legions Aerithere, I believe was supposed to ship from the factory in July, June, late June, early July, somewhere in there, maybe a little bit later. And that's being backed up till probably at least September now. But we did get the um, first, I, I, like, tooling samples from our tooling uh, in the studio uh, day before yesterday and started checking them out yesterday. And they look beautiful. So, so things are moving along quickly. They really are busting their butts to try to, 
try to ramp things up to get things going. But we don't have an actual exact schedule now. We just know that everything that we, we thought it was going to be backed up by like three or four months. It looks like maybe two months or okay. so. Things will be a little bit farther backed up than it was. Um, but I don't think it's going to be that terrible. But once we have a definite schedule on that, which we should get within the next week or two, um, we're, we're going to post it on uh, sourcehorseman.com and all of our social media uh, spots. Excellent. Excellent. Very cool. Very cool. So we kind of talked about conventions too. I mean, it, we, right now, who knows when we're going to be able to get back to something like that. So yeah. I know you guys usually do exclusives for places like PowerCon and you recently just did the pre-orders for a wave that had some of your figures that you're going to bring to PowerCon. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys have anything in place to go an alternate route, sell them online, anything like that? Yeah, well, our, our factory um, still thinks that they can stay on schedule in order to have the, you're talking about Dorina Ornoris and um, Lord Dragul, the kind yes. of uh, homage figure, Mythic Legions figures. Um, the factories told us that they still are on track to get those to us in the amount of time that they were supposed to, because okay. those are reuse parts no new tooling it's it's uh we're reusing tooling and then we're doing repaints to build these characters so what our current plan is and we like i said in in the upcoming press release we'll let you know but you're hearing it here first is that we're going to try to put up a an in stock sale for those on the day that power PowerCon was supposed to have happened this year awesome. i think i think we'll be able to manage it and hopefully, like right now, Megalopolis, our, our um, fulfillment partner who ships out all of our stuff to customers for us, right now they're like we are. They're kind of just going in and out and only being in there when they have to. But hopefully by then, the, sh you know, the, the, the shipping and stuff will be on a more regular schedule. And so we'll be able to sell them on the day that PowerCon was supposed to happen and then ship them out within the next day or two afterwards. So that's it'll fantastic. almost be like being there. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully yeah, totally. It's going to be real interesting because it seems like a lot of a lot of people are trying to move to some sort of like virtual convention for Comic-Con and I think PowerCon is going to try it as well. So yeah. uh, it's going to be an interesting time, I think, for all of this. We started that trend a couple of years ago. You totally with, did. <laughs> with with G-Con. We started that a couple of years ago and didn't realize that it might be just about the only viable option for the next year or two. So visionaries. Hey, we're ahead of the curve there. Yeah, <laughs> just, you guys are visionaries. <laughs> yeah, just because we're lazy, we don't want to fly out to San Diego Comic-Con and we're cheap. So we started doing it online. And I guess we we're a little bit ahead of the curve on that stuff. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right. So um, we're going to continue on with some stuff for Mythic Legions here. Uh, I do have some questions that I kind of collected from some of the viewers of some things to ask you. So I figure I'll just kind of go down the list. And I thought this was a really interesting question. When you guys are designing your characters for Mythic Legions, uh, what sort of material do you use for reference, if any at all? Like specifically when you're coming up with like armor designs and weapon designs? Well, I mean, as with a lot of the stuff that we've done over the years, we like to go in and like look at something like if this started way back when we first started working with uh, Mattel on the masters, obviously we revamped the 2009s, uh, the 2000 X stuff and it was different, but it still had a, a feel of the original. When we started in doing Batman stuff, we kind of took um, reference from all different points from cartoons, from comics, from movies, from video games and, and took the things that we liked the best and incorporated into the figures that we were doing and it's kind of the way that we do things with Mythic Legions, too. Like, we actually do have reference material at the studio of actual armor from, you know, the Middle Ages or, or eras where when you look at the armor, you say, oh, this came from here, that came from there. But we like to tweak it a little bit and add a little bit of fantasy into it. It's enough so it's it looks like it's within the realm of possibility, but also it looks like there's no way that could happen. Like, we've got guys that have big shoulder pads on big giant metal shoulder pads, but right. they're completely bare chested and bare armed with no straps or anything, unless you put a <laughs> strap on them. It's just floating metal armor pads. That couldn't happen, but they're taken from um, actual reality and history. And then we just kind of tweak it and twist it a little bit. And all that, cre all the credit for Mythic Legions 
has to go almost 100% as far as design and the the uh, storyline and everything to Eric Treadaway. He's just a freaking genius and a madman when it comes to that stuff. And he's just cranking cranking through the stuff. And Jim and I are just kind of holding on to his shirt tails along for the ride going, all right, <laughs> we're with you, man. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. I love Eric's stuff, man, so much. Yeah. Um, unbelievable so we're lucky i yeah. particularly am lucky lucky to have two partners like those guys because otherwise i'd be still working in a factory that's awesome man yeah you guys make a great team you guys have been doing some cool stuff for a long time and i i love seeing like mythic legions really take off you know you've done we've seen you guys do so much work on other licenses or work with other companies toy companies but the fact that you guys were able to kind of create your own line and that it has seen the success that it has is really amazing that's got to feel pretty good well thank you yeah i mean this is something that eric and i have been talking about for i don't know uh, 20 years since we were at mcfarland toy we've talked about you know we'd like to do like a really cool medieval line of action figures toys something that's you know more sword and sorcery based this kind of base in reality but you know, has a lot of fantasy, kind of like um, Game of Thrones, but taking a step farther, you know, into the fantasy realm. And so this is kind of like a dream come true to come true to us. And it, it it's amazing to us that it's clicked with so many people and it just keeps every pre-order we have or every in stock sale we have. It just kind of grows exponentially and people just seem to be latching on to it. So we just found something that stuck and we got lucky. I always totally. tell you, say we, we try not to suck and that kind <laughs> of fits here. We try not to suck. And this time maybe we didn't suck so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say not. I'd say not. And you know, they've been so popular. Like you mentioned everything selling out whenever you guys put them up for pre-sale or the, the in stock sales and the aftermarket prices kind of show like, you know, how much people want these. So I've seen some of these figures go for really high dollar on the aftermarket. What are your thoughts on that? My thoughts on that is that can't last. I mean, I understand there's characters like Otho. He is from the first wave. When he was initially released, he was not a very popular character. He did not, I mean, he didn't, none of them sold badly, but he was on the lower tier of the, the sales um, that we had for the first wave of figures we released. And then once people got him in hand, they saw how cool he was. And he has slowly just creeped up the scale. And in the last probably four or five months, he's creeped up to three or $400. I think there's one on eBay right now that has something like 25 bids on it and a few days to go that's over 200 bucks. And I just can't Amazing. comprehend that. I can't understand it. An Ilgar, that's a, like a skeleton guy with a big Viking beard and everything, sold uh the other day for just over four hundred dollars i don't understand wow. it but you know what the thing is if there's people out there that are willing to spend that money and they love the the items that much more power to them i wish more of those giant dollars were coming into our pockets but <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the thing right i mean yeah. that's the aftermarket I mean, so that's not even <laughs> it's super cool that people are so passionate and excited about that that they're willing to pay that much for a you know, a six, six inch hunk of plastic. Trust me, I spent my fair share on hunks of plastic. So, you know, I know it's no some of it has, has been like big chunks of change just to get the stuff that I wanted. So I get that. It just seems weird that something that I'm involved with, even the smallest amount of involvement with it, that it's gotten that popular and people are that excited to get it into their uh, houses and get it on their shelves and play with them and stuff. Yeah, totally. So uh, with that being said, I know you guys do try to do restocks every now and then. You do reissue some of the figures and you do have uh, in-stock sale coming up pretty quick here, right? Yes, we do. This uh, coming Friday at 9 p.m. on storehorseman.com is going to be the in-stock sale. And I'm both excited about it and dreading it tremendously. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah. Because our last in-stock sale, it crashed the store for five hours. Oh and man! It, it crashed. They hit it so hard that it it crashed the store for five hours. And when Mike, my son Mike, was kind of running the store and everything at the time, when he went in there to try to figure it out and try to get things back up again, it wasn't just like non-operational. It was telling us that the store was no longer there. It was gone. That wow scared the crap out of us. I don't know what happened to the servers, but it was no longer there. And in five hours, it came back up. And I heard I did. I wasn't awake because it was like. 
I don't know, three in the morning when it finally came back up, but it just slowly started coming back up and like parts of it were available that you could get to. And then it finally went back and I guess a lot of people had a lot of trouble obviously getting in in the first few hours to get what they want. But then after it came back up, people seemed to have a pretty easy time getting in there and getting what they wanted. They just crashed it in the beginning. So I have been on the phone with 3D carts twice this week. First time I sat on hold for three and a half hours, couldn't get through. Today, I sat on the phone for two hours, couldn't get through. I'm trying to get to talk to them to see if there's some way we can make sure that, that site is bolstered enough so it just, it, it won't crash. But I don't know, fingers are crossed. And we've it's been- It's tough, man. Yeah, we've, we've been actually trying to launch a new uh, retail outlet, a retail site on the, uh, on the internet. But because the coronavirus and some other things, it kind of got delayed. And now we have to, do, I mean, we've got to sell these people want these figures. So we've got to sell them. So we're still using the same uh, store that we were using and hopefully it won't crash. Oh, plus these are newer figures that a lot of people jumped in on and got. So, you know, I hope they all sell well, but I hope it doesn't crash our store too. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, this is one of those tricky things where I think a lot of people, you know, as collectors, we don't really think about all that side of things, you know, yeah. like all the work that would have to go into actually making sure the servers are holding up and the sale goes smoothly. Because from our side, we're like, I should be able just to get on here and buy what I need. You know, we don't think about like all the... Too. Yeah, it gets tough sometimes. So uh, it, it's great. You know, sometimes we got to sit back and realize, man, there's a lot that goes in to even yeah, the it, things like online sales. Right. And um, one of the things is that uh, we have been after every in stock sale where it's slowed our site down or more recently it's crashed. We've contacted them and we've actually upped our bandwidth and stuff. And they're telling us that's not what it is. It's just killing our servers and stuff. So hopefully they'll be yeah. able to help us out this time and it won't won't crash, but we'll see. But guarantee there's a um, another I can't say too much about it yet, but another sale, not a pre-order, an actual sale coming up in the next few months um, that we will have a new store up and running that hopefully will be a little bit more robust than the one we currently have. Awesome. Awesome. Well, looking forward to that for sure. Um, so along those lines, speaking of kind of like future sales, uh, I actually have seen several people asking about the potential of having the uh, Legion Builders as like a evergreen type item always right. in stock is that something you guys are still trying to do i think you've talked about that before yeah we've actually uh got the factory working on those now um i think we made the final decision on which ones we're going to do we're only going to release i think like maybe six of the legion builders to begin with but we're going to re release them in large quantities and see how those go and see how they sell see how interested people are in really collecting the Legion builders. A lot of people want them now because there's a lot of customizing going on with Myth Mythic Legions and they're kind of sure. built to promote that. Um, so we're hoping that they sell well. And if so, then we'll start bringing in more of the, the Legion builders and trying those in the store. And, and yeah, again, we hope to have them in the store all the time. Like if we so see the start, stock start dwindling, then we'll reorder from the factory. And those are figures that they already have all the tooling. Then you just need to pump out the plastic, paint them, send them to us. So it's something that we should be able to re replenish within a couple of months or so after we put the order in, but we'll see how it goes. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Let's talk, talk uh, specific characters now for Mythic Legions. Um, I always see lots of requests for various types of, you know, characters or representation. I'm sure you've seen lots of these requests too. So oh, yeah. I'm going to throw some out at you. If you uh, want to talk about them, you can totally right. understand if you don't want to give anything away yet. Um, any plans for any new vampires in the line? Absolutely. Um, all I can say is you're going to see that very soon. Very, very soon. Very soon. Awesome. Yeah. How about how about werewolf characters? No solid plans to actually do those yet, but there are werewolf and uh, different other types of were characters in the myth in the mythology. So those will be coming. None currently planned like on the list or on the timeline just yet, but they're coming. 
Awesome. Uh, any plans to do parts to make wizards or have any wizard characters? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, that's an easy one to answer. Yeah. we. I mean, that's something that we've had requests for since just after the first release that like most people were, were, were requesting female figures because the first release of 33 figures or was our first wave. Yeah. Uh, our first wave <laughs> of 33 figures were all male figures, but it was because we wanted to build a library of tools for that male body for the different armor pieces for the bear parts and stuff like that and then the second big wave we released was 43 characters the the big ones and um that had the females in it but the second most requested thing after females were magic user wizards warlock type characters sorceresses and people wanted the you know the robes and all that kind of thing so yeah we're we're going to be doing that that's awesome. That's really cool to hear. Um, another of the really popular character choices that I've seen a lot of people want more of is more skeletons. You think you'll be going back to doing some more skeletons? I know you've done a lot already. <laughs> skeletons are super popular, so we can't not do them. Um, there's a wave of figures coming up that um, has a lot of skeletons in the wave for a certain reason. Um, I think it's not the next big wave, but the one after that, I think. Cool. I have to check and see. But yeah, more skeletons are coming. I mean, you in particular like one of them, right? This guy yeah. right here, you mean? Yeah, that you mean, guy. You, you mean, mean Pixis? Pixis. The coolest of the all the Mythic Legions <laughs> figures? <laughs> yeah, you could say I might be a little partial. <laughs> I don't I don't know why we made you a skeleton rather than a normal human, though, but I don't I like skeletons, so it works for yeah. me. And the and colors you can have a, they're customizable. You can have somebody like, or you can do it yourself, swap out the arms with like flesh arms and legs too, if you'd like. And then it's, there we go. It's, <laughs> it's beefy pixel, Dan. <laughs> yeah. I like it. <laughs> All right. So here's the big one then dragons. Yeah. So, I mean, we got to do a dragon. We I've, I've been saying it myself for years. I would like to do like a big three foot tall dragon, you know, from a floor to like three feet high, just, a big giant massive oh my thing. Gosh. The problem with that is the log logistics of shipping. It's not a problem of course. to sculpt it because we do everything digitally now. We could sculpt one that large, and you know it could be this big in the computer, but you know you make it gigantic. Um, producing it, we would use kind of like the same method that we've used with the uh, the troll figures, where they're somewhat some parts are roto molded. Um, it's a slower process, but it's a much cheaper process and allows it's, the slowness of the process makes it a little more expensive because it's more of the factory time. The cheapness of the actual process itself of the actual production of it kind of levels it out with with uh, things that you would have um, like the ABS and PVC material. Hard to explain to somebody who doesn't know what I'm talking about. But, you no, know, no, that's, the, the that's good. I always love hearing this stuff. hollow... Uh, big figures that that those are roto molded, and that's the way we would do a lot of the dragon parts as well. We would roll them, roto mold them. So the weight for shipping probably wouldn't be too terrible, but the size of the box, I think you would have to come in yeah. a, rather than a window box or a blister box or whatever, it would have to come <laughs> in a completely solid box and it'd have to be in pieces inside the box, and then you pop it together when you get it out because. Shipping a fully assembled dragon like that would be a fortune. Totally, but yeah, like a big old snake that. mountain. We have big old snake mountain size it. box. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> snake mountain size box. Snake mountain, man, that thing. I, I can't even imagine how they're going to ship that thing. But more power to. Oh them. my goodness! I just well, I just talked to Brian uh, two days ago, <laughs> and he showed off Snake Mountain and gave like he, he went into a crazy detail on the logistics of the shipping and everything. It's man, it's amazing. I can't believe he's gonna get that big thing out. <laughs> I tell you, man, they've got the go get them attitude. If anybody's gonna be able to do it, they're gonna be able to pull that off. Yeah, man, I can't wait. It's awesome. It's awesome. Of course, you guys worked on that as well. Yes, sir. So it's so cool. Yeah, that was all a right. Fun project. So, it feels like a long time coming too. A long <laughs> I feel time. Like, yeah, yeah, a long yeah. time and, and been through two different companies' hands before it's finally getting produced. So, <laughs> yeah, a long time. It's like the perfect cherry on top. That's what I keep calling it. It's like the perfect yeah. capper to that collection. I love yeah. it. I'm so excited. 
All right. So back on the Mythic Legion stuff, we talked about the PowerCon exclusives already. They, uh, yeah. And you guys might you have plans for the newer exclusives, but um, it's there's no doubt that those homages have been pretty popular in the past. Yeah. And uh, I've seen several people wondering if you would ever consider reissuing any of those, specifically Adamon and Keltus get brought up quite a bit. Oh, we, we never say no, absolutely not to something like that. Our current plans are no, we don't want to re-release those. Part of that is, and I'm being very frank about this, is Mattel has been very, very gracious with not coming in and saying, you can't do those. I mean, it's really, it's our own figures and we're just repainting them to be kind of homage to the characters. We're not creating any new parts that are specifically aimed at the homages that they're supposed to be. But... Right you know, to, to produce something like that and put it out there with the relationship that we've had over, with Mattel over the years and for them to, uh, we've had people from Mattel come up and tell us how much they love those. I mean, that's really a great thing. I mean, a lot of companies would come in and just squash you and tell you, you're not allowed to do something like that. So we kind of feel like re-releasing them would kind of be, because right now they're, they're date. We, oh, by the way, we don't, we don't refer to those as exclusive figures because they're not really exclusive. They're debut figures. You can gotcha. get them earlier at the conventions, like months earlier before you get them uh, through store horsemen. But um, when we do debut figures like that, they're meant as a loving homage to, you know, what kind of put us on the map and something we've loved our whole lives. And we wouldn't want to sour our relationship with anybody by, you know, re-releasing it and people thinking that we're trying to, you know, step on their toes or anything. That's not what it's about at all. We're not doing it for the money. We're doing that because we love that property and we love um, the fact that we were able to work on it for so many years. So of course. we're finally doing something that people seem to really dig. So we're saying, okay, and by the way, here's where our roots are. And, you know, this is our little bit of an homage to where we kind of came from. Sure, sure. Okay, that makes total sense. So at the moment, we're, I, we say no, we're never going to re-release those, but we don't know. Maybe way down the road, who knows what may happen? It might happen. Court, never say never. Yeah, right? that's the way that that's the toy industry in general. Never say never. <laughs> Except for Sir Valgard, he was an exclusive that we did for Kickstarter, and um, when we did that for Kickstarter, we had said that this will never be released in this. It will never be released for sale in this same form again. That figure or the parts might be reused in certain ways. It might be repainted, but this particular figure will never be reused again. So when we got them in, we shipped them out to everybody who pre-ordered them. And then we thought, you know what? We've got a lot of these left over. Let's go ahead and put these up for sale to our Kickstarter backers who these were exclusive to. They were exclusive to those Kickstarter backers. So we'll make an offer to them. Hey, if you guys want to buy these, you're going to be allowed to buy these because you backed this project from the beginning. Here you go. And people did not like that <laughs> because oh. we said we're not going to re-release this ever again. People yeah. were like, no, even though I was a Kickstarter backer, you said those. Would, and I think it's because it keeps the numbers down of how many were sold. So what we did, we, we've we been giving those away. Those are like giveaway prizes now. We're like, you know what? You're right. We should have worded it differently to where, you know, at some point we may make these only available to you Kickstarter backers again and nobody else, but we didn't. And so we stuck by our word that we, you know, we wouldn't re-release those or set, resell those, I guess, again. So we, we use them as giveaways and prizes and things like that now. Yeah. Okay. That makes total sense. Total, yeah. total sense. All right. So you've done some other homages outside of masters, like the D and D kind of stuff. Um, or I at would... least given, or at least given parts to where you could do it. Right. Um, hmm. Do you guys have any other kind of homages that you want to do or planning to do or anything you can talk about? We're fans of, I mean, we don't like, um, come right out and say, oh, we're going to do an homage of this. Let's make this character. Right. That. But every once in a while, if a color pattern works um, and it looks like, you know, a, a character that's been released or something, we'll go ahead and throw some parts in there. As far as the, the homage that we currently do, we will never do another homage. How, never say never. But the current plans are we would never do any homage where it's a complete figure that's an homage to something. Like you said, we will release some pieces in one figure and some pieces in another figure. And then you might buy two or three figures and be able to put it, 
together a nice homage yourself, but we won't, um, don't currently have any plans to do that. No. Okay. okay. I mean, I've seen cool. some homages that people have done with mythic legions online. People have done, um, like one guy took a bunch of the orcs and made a set of Ninja Turtles out of it. And that was, fantastic. yeah, I'd love to do that. That's super cool. Some guy has taken uh, some knights and made Batman, Robin, and Joker. They're beautiful. I love when people do that stuff, but that's not something that we're uh, probably going to do too much of. Right, right. But that's also the beauty of this line. The fact that it's kind of made to be interchangeable so that you can build your own figures. And so you can come up with all kinds of cool creations like that. I think that is so cool. Yeah, when we first started the line, it was going to be a three and three quarter inch line it was going to I remember the, that right it was going to use the glio system it was going to be much less articulated and so you could pop it apart and change parts around and stuff and build your own things but when we did um price quotes with the factory we found out that it's not going to be much more expensive to do six inch scaled figures or i guess six and seven somewhere where, wherever they're at um rather than the little three and three quarter inch figures and a lot of people were asking for that instead of three and three quarters so we did it and we kind of changed the system. We added a lot more articulation and made it so you can break them apart, you know, without without actually breaking them. Some of, some of the joints you have to use a little heat on, but they, it can be done if you want to customize. Um, but we never thought fans were going to take it to the level that they've taken it to now. Yeah. Some of the yeah. custom, we thought people were just going to take parts from one figure, take parts from another figure, swap them around and make different color combinations. People are making brand new creations out of these things and we've not in in all the times we've i mean in all the years that we've been involved in the toy industry and toy collecting i in particular and I th eric says it too we've never seen a response like this to an action figure line where people like embrace it as their own so much and there there's so much creativity going in maybe transformers but that's that's like bigger companies like overseas that are doing that kind of stuff sure. and gi joe's they do it with somewhat but nothing like mythic legions and I, there's photography all over the internet of this stuff it's crazy how how people have just latched onto it i love it that's amazing that's that's got to feel so good it does, <laughs> it does. I, I i still remember that um it was that toy fair you guys were doing your event at toy tokyo and you had the big display when you were kind of first showing it off because mm -hmm. You had like the, um, they were like, they were two ups because they were like seven inch scale, but you had told everybody that you had planned to do them in the four inch glio scale. Right. And I remember the response immediately was, no, we want that size. Yeah. <laughs> Those yeah, larger well, figures. They, they really were two ups for the three and three quarter inch figures. So now the final figures have come down a little bit smaller in what the, than what those originals were. But yeah, everybody yeah. was saying, I want that size. I want that size. And we actually had some, I guess, kind of showing off. Uh, the customizability of these things without really understanding what it was going to grow to. We sure. had different artists come in and actually do their renditions, take um, casted parts and do their renditions of these figures and what they would want to see if they were to design their own figures and they completely customize them themselves. And I just, I guess not seeing at that time, we, we, we should have seen then what it could grow into. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's so cool. And you know what? Sometimes so, it's a little frustrating because like these fans will do these great customs and we're like, <laughs> oh, we want to do that. But then they're going to say we stole it from them. Yeah. Why didn't we think of that first? <laughs> yeah, there, were, there have been fans that I've gone and say, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to steal this from you. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, go ahead. That's cool, man. That's awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. We haven't done it yet, but we may. <laughs> Well, um, so on that customization thing, you guys have introduced um, like the hand and feet packs, right? Yes. Do you guys have plans to expand that into doing stuff like head packs or armor packs or stuff like that? Absolutely. I mean, we've been doing weapons packs from the beginning. And right. um, we just, in the most recent Aerithere wave that we launched with new tooling, we included uh, humanoid, like kind of Caucasian skin, hands and feet, bare hands and bare feet. Because mm -hmm. all of our characters are normally fairly armored, almost from head to toe. Um, and then we've done um, both uh, also orc or orcish, like green monster hands and feet as well. And um, we do have plans to do head more head packs. People have been screaming for head packs for a long time. And we are going to be doing more head packs. 
and we're going to be doing um, more armor add-on pieces, things like that. And we're talking about possibly making a customizable uh, setup where you can go in and you can order, like it has to be a whole figure, but you can go in and like take these parts and these parts and these parts and like put them all together in a figure and purchase that as a blank. We've talked about it for a long time and how to do that and how to make it effective. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to have all the different parts listed and you go in and you say, okay, I want these upper arms, these lower arms, these hands, these feet, these thighs, these calves, and put them all together into one figure. And these parts would come to you loose and you then would take it and put it all together yourself. And you would pick oh, wow. heads and stuff like that. But they would be blank. They'd be white, gray, black, whatever you want, whatever of those probably only those three colors to cast in, depending on how you were going to paint it. Sure. We discussed it. We would love to do that. It's something we've talked about. We've talked about it for years. And we've kind of been throwing it around more lately because people seem to just be going crazy with the customization. So we may do that soon. That's awesome. That is very cool. Very cool. And because oh. there's no paint applications, we'd be, offer, be able to offer them at a, a lower price point than a normal figure. And because there's no... Uh, assembly of them at the factory, maybe we'd be able to offer them at a little a little cheaper than a normal figure as well. So we'll yeah. see. We're going to try to price something like that out and see if we can find our current uh, website guy, Jeremy Gerard, the guy who does like all of our digital marketing and is running the um, sourcehorseman.com right now. But he's also working on the new um, uh, store horseman, our new online storefront. Um, he's putting that new one together. And I talked to him about it a while back and he said the type of website I was asking for might be a Herculean effort, but if we could <laughs> simplify it, if we could simplify it, it might be doable. So we'll see. We'll see. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So we, we kind of talked about various characters and stuff like that too already. Um, but one of the things you guys used to do in the past was your fantastic exclusive voting for yeah. your characters. Um, is that something you guys have thought about bringing back? Maybe. I mean, we've we've done uh, when we first did or when we did the two big waves, of Mythic Legions, the first wave and then the uh, Mythic Legions Advent of Decay, the second big Kickstarter that we did. We allowed fans to go in and like pick different parts and, and pick different paint schemes and stuff to create a character. And one of them happened to become the most probably the second or third most popular mythic legions figure so far um his name's vorgus vermilius the blood armor and it's just it's a guy in this kind of magenta red almost blood colored mm -hmm. armor from head to toe and he's just really super popular and the fans actually helped us create that they're the ones who picked the parts for that they're one the ones who picked the various paint scheme for it the accessories that kind of thing they even helped us come up with a name and some of the background story and everything so we did that with that wave, and then the, the Advent of Decay wave, we did one as well. So they were similar to the fantastic exclusive thing we used to do, but yeah. it was just right within Mythic Legions itself. And both of those were really successful, and the characters were really popular. So there's, there's no question that we'll look into possibly doing it again. But since we're not doing a Kickstarter, I'm not exactly sure how we'll flesh that out, but yeah, well, we should have, uh, we should try to do that again. People seem to really dig that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll never forget Minotaur the Duck. We need, uh, <laughs> we need Minotaur the Duck in Mythic Legions. Minotaur yeah. needs to rise again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was, that was, that wasn't part of Fantastic Exclusive, but it was a fan suggestion. Yeah, I remember and that. We weren't going to do it. And then we th thought, you know what? Let's go ahead and do this and not tell anybody and see yeah. what the fans think. And when they saw that, they went nuts. They went nuts about it. It was cool. I think that was like a forum joke or something, right? Yeah, it was. It just turned into, yeah. yeah somebody, like, because we were asking people for suggestions for different types of birds to be made into the Gothatropolis birds. And somebody wanted this like heavy duty warrior duck and he had a Viking helmet and everything. And he did this crude mock-up, but it was hilarious. And we yeah. love doing funny things like that within our, our lines sometimes. Like back when we did the elephants, we did a pink elephant, uh -huh. and um, we did a, 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 a like a black and white spotted cow when we did the minotaurs for Seventh Kingdom. So we like doing kind of silly little variants like that. 
and that one was just right up our alley. When we saw that, we we knew we were going to do it, but we didn't tell anybody. We joked around <laughs> with it for a while, and then when it came out, people were just super excited about that. <laughs> it was fun. And it was stupid. <laughs> it was hilarious <laughs> and stupid, but it was awesome. I still have mine. It was a, it was a duck him. with a Viking helmet and a big scar over one eye. <laughs> yep. <laughs> He's amazing. <laughs> I think he had a, uh, like a crack in his beak too. <laughs> awesome. All right. So what can you tell me about cosmic legions? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we hope to have a reveal of some of the characters from either galactic legions, cosmic legions, star legions, whatever we end up officially calling it. Um, we hope to be, revealing that uh we were hoping to reveal some of that during gcon uh the next gcon which was is supposed to be in july we're still not july or august we're still not sure if and when that's going to happen if it does it may be like a virtual thing uh well it's already a virtual thing but i mean like normally we have people right. in the studio but this time they might be like calling in via zoom or something like that um like well, what we're doing here kind of what we're doing here yeah um <laughs> yeah. but uh, we were hoping to announce it during that uh, because of some of the delays and some of the things that we've had to change because of COVID-19. Um, we'll see. We'll see if we do some sure. reveals then. But that's, fingers are crossed that that's when it's going to happen. If if not, it's going to be soon after. Very we'll make cool. the big well, official I'm announcement and we'll we'll put a bunch of new information out there about it. I'm excited. I can't wait to see what you guys are doing with that. That's going to be great. Yeah, we've... It's something we've had in our head for years and something we've been slowly working on while trudging through everything else. And it's finally gotten to a point where I think we're ready to reveal some stuff in the near future. Very cool. Very cool. All right. So we, we briefly talked about um, the work that you've done for other toy companies on a lot of our other favorite toy lines out there. So is Mythic Legions like most of what you guys are focusing on these days? Are you still doing some for hire work for other toy companies? We're doing a lot of work for Super 7, right? Like a lot. There's like lines that I can't discuss that we're like our new things coming up that I actually, right. when we're done here, I got to go do some revisions on some stuff. But um, the uh, main one that we're doing, or the couple main ones we're doing, is Thundercats and Teenage yep. Mutant Ninja Turtles with Super Seven. Uh, I'm we're so excited! I'm so excited for Turtles. You have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, did they reveal? They haven't revealed Waves Three and Four yet, have they? Not, no, no. I keep, I keep bugging Brian about making sure Muck Man's in Wave Three, but he won't tell me for <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, we finished up Waves Three and Four, and we finished awesome. up uh, Wave Four of Thundercats. Um, we're just wrapping up the third wave of NJPW New Japan Pro Wrestling. Awesome. I mean, to me, I'm not I'm not really much of a wrestling fan, but those are really super cool, kind of quirky, superhero-y kind of characters. So we're having fun with that line. Yeah. And what else are we doing for them that I can talk about? Oh, you saw the Conan stuff that we they revealed at uh PowerCon. Yes. Uh, the Conan movie stuff. Um, we're still doing more work down that avenue um i can't i don't have the list in front of me so i don't remember exactly what all we're doing with him i know i know the things that i'm working on currently i can't there's three four things that i can't discuss okay <laughs> yeah and one of them has to do with one of the uh two big properties i mentioned in the beginning and something big Oh man, I think I know what's going. Like Brian's kind of teased us about a big thing too. So yeah, yeah, we're we've got Ooh. big plans for Thundercats and Ninja Turtles. Awesome, that is so good to hear. That is so good to hear. Very cool. Um, are you, I don't know if you guys are doing much with Master still these days. I think we've talked about that a little bit in the past. We are. We're doing um the Masters of the Universe Origins figures. Okay. Now, we're all we're doing on that is we're. We're um, taking uh, the existing vintage figures and we're creating new heads and like sometimes having to redo new accessories to just kind of tighten up some of the detail and stuff on them. They still want them to look kind of, I hate to use the word, but kind of cheesy and kind of goofy like the original figures. Right. They're going for that retro look. Yeah. Retro. Them. That's a better thing. Yeah. <laughs> instead, <laughs> instead of insulting the line, I could have just said retro. <laughs> <laughs> but uh 
yeah, we're working on some of that stuff for Mattel. It's not it's not a ton of work. Like they they had the He Man and uh, Prince Adam figure finished and all the articulation finished before we got started on that, the base bodies and everything. So we're going sure. off of that. And any new items that you see on top of that, those are the things that we're working on. I think they they did Battle Cat. We didn't get the chance to work on Battle Cat. It was just a time constraint. They said, this came up. We need this pretty quickly. What's your timeline? We're like, well, we're swamped with this, this, and this right now. And we just, if you had a different timeline, we could definitely jump on it. But they decided to do it in-house. And from what I've seen, I haven't had one in hand, but from what I've seen, they did a beautiful job on it. So oh, that's Very all cool. well and good. But yeah, Very we're cool. working on that with them right now. Um, we did do some of the Motu minis. We did some new ones that I think they showed at PowerCon. I mm -hmm. don't know if they're moving forward with that line or not, because I haven't heard much about it since then. But They showed them at Toy Fair, and they're still showing them on their social media every now and then. So okay. I think... I think they're still coming from what I've what I've heard, but I love those figures. I would like to so have, fun. see them have a little bit more articulation if it were my own personal taste, but not a ton more articulation. But I just love the style of those figures and everything. I would love to see them come out. Yeah, yeah, they were really cool. I still have all the original ones that Mattel yeah. had released because um, I think most of them are still the same type of sculpts, right? Or did you guys yes. do them all? No, no, okay. they're, they're the same type of sculpts. And we went in and did, I think, it was three or four new characters. Okay. For, that they revealed at PowerCon or Toy Fair or wherever it was, I don't recall. But um, yeah, we did we did a few new characters. But then after that, we haven't really done anything on it. So I don't know if we're going to be moving forward with that or not. I hope so. Yeah, yeah, very cool, very cool. All right, so you guys have done some licenses in house too in the past. Um, and I, I had a question specifically about Power Lords to see if right. you guys were still planning to do stuff with Power Lords at all power lords is done with us unfortunately done? okay yeah we were huge fans of power lords and we really wanted to move forward but it was a line that i think it was too obscure for the general public i mean we even thought like in the 80s it was before its time it was a line that just had some strange crazy characters in it that we just thought it was just a little bit ahead of its time so we thought maybe re-releasing them now um maybe it would you know, it would speak to a new generation and it just didn't. I mean, it, it did okay. It did enough to like barely keep going, yeah. but not much more than that. And we just, we couldn't see where we were going to be able to, to push the line any farther. So what we did is we tried to launch a six inch scale version of it. Right. And we right. kind of did our own pre-order online because we thought, you know what, maybe we can do these like mythic legions and do, them this scale we weren't going to include like the uh the customizability that you'd have myth with mythic legions but we're including like you know the really nice articulation the the high level of sculpting and paint detail that uh you know we've kind of become known for doing and it just didn't go over nobody really seemed to be all that interested in it i mean it started out with a bang had a lot of people jump on said yeah i want to do this and like put in their pre-orders but nothing panda it just kind of died after that that's a bummer. we were pushing it hard we were putting out a lot of ads for it and pushing it and it just promoting the crap out of it it just didn't go so i yeah. don't believe that we'll ever ever uh, approach that line again but there's it's, mythic legions i mean there's a the the cosmic galactic space yeah there's it's up, not so. like there's any lack of cool things to buy from you guys <laughs> yeah that's gonna be our space baseline if you people don't want that maybe you'll want this there you go. There you go. Excellent. We'll see. <laughs> well, I think that's uh, most of the questions, all the questions that I actually had for you today. So okay. uh, just w once more, I want to make sure everybody knows that you do have that sale coming up on Friday. Yep. Um, this coming Friday, 9 p.m. on storehorseman.com. It should launch immediately at 9 p.m. on the dot. Sometimes it lags a little bit because that's when people start hammering the refresh button. Right. So it might slow it down. It might, you know, go up a little bit later than that. But uh, um, that's when it'll launch. Um, it's f characters from both uh, Siege at Bjorngar, that wave, and from the Wasteland wave. And there's also a barbarian warrior builder figure. It's a female barbarian that we got shorted from the factory a while back. And then they sent us the uh the ones that they owed us so we've got those in there too and they're going to be part of that sale as well 
And that hasn't okay. been announced. That's the first time you're hearing this too. The awesome. female, <laughs> war, yeah, the female uh, barbarian warrior builder is going to be part of that sale as well. So excellent. Starts at 9 p.m. Storehorseman.com. Prepare be for there. battle. Don't, prepare for battle. Don't miss out. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, was there anything else that you wanted to talk about or throw out there before we cap this off today? Not that I can think of right now. I mean, I, I really appreciate this this uh and, and you know you have me on here so i can promote the upcoming in stock sale i just hope that people who see this who try to go in there and try out the in stock sale and get cart jacked and see the store crash and uh, don't get what they want i hope they don't get too upset that's kind of just the way it goes with our in stock sales get in on the pre-orders the pre-orders and order what you want and you're guaranteed to get it and, yes uh, because when you guys do pre-orders you do a window on those right yeah so we do like can just get in and at least a month. Sometimes we bump it up to two months, depending on what type of pre-order it is. And we take as many orders that we can get in that, that month and you're guaranteed to get it. Now it's a pre-order and we go into production after the pre-orders come in. So if there's new tooling, it'll be like a year later before you get the figures. Or if there's no new tooling, it'll be six to eight months before you get the figures, but you're guaranteed to get them. When we have the in-stock sale, it's just what we have left over in the warehouse after we've sent out all the uh, pre-order figures and and uh, taken our own little allotments. And what's left there is what goes up on the store for um, the in-stock. Oh, and after we do our uh, customer QC issues and stuff, send parts out for that, whatever's left goes in the in-stock sales. And the last couple have been brutal. I hate to say it, but it, they've been brutal. Hopefully it won't be that, that bad this time, but we'll see. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, good luck on the sale. I, I hope you. it goes great. I'm very much anxiously awaiting the reveal of the new stuff, the cosmic stuff. And I think, I think you guys are doing some really awesome stuff there with mythic legions. Thank you. I appreciate that, Dan. That's uh, coming from you. That's, that's, uh, that's quite a compliment. <laughs> well, CB, thank you very much for taking the time to sit here with us and answer all these questions for the past hour. It was awesome to hear from you again. And uh, hey, maybe we can do this again sometime in the future, especially after yep. you guys reveal some new things. Absolutely. I'm here at home all the time now. So anytime you want to do it, just let yeah. me know. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. Great. Thank you so much, CB. And guys, thank you so very much for watching. Until next time. Thanks, Dan. Bye.